Okay, not quite sure what happened there. I think my Wi-Fi signal dropped, so um, apologies for that. Hopefully you can all find me again. So just bear with me a moment while I refresh. So yeah, hopefully you can find me and come back on. Not quite sure what happened there. How odd. Okay, I can see some I can see some people jump. Okay, here we go. So yeah, just leave me a comment when you're here. Once we've got a few people on, then we'll we'll get going with the crafting bit. So we've gotten all the retiring what's going out of the catalogue bit out of the way, and now we can just get on with our crafting, can't we? Oh, back again. Right. Just bear with me one second. I'll be right back. Hang on. Okay. Right. I'm back. I'm not quite sure what's happened. Um, my Wi-Fi signal has dropped. I've just gone to check and make sure no one else is using the internet. Uh, so we'll see. So fingers crossed. Just when we get to the really, really fun bit. But let's hope it holds out. So anyway, apologies. <clears throat> just having a quick drink. So I'm going to use, I'm going to do what the floating element technique, I think it's called. So that's using some acetate, some window sheets and some strips of card. Alrighty, let's try this again. I've just changed my Wi-Fi connection. So, fingers crossed. Apologies, folks. Let's see if you can, if you come back in again. No, Sue, it is not playing nice. Um, somehow my phone had switched. We've got a different number of different, couple of different routers um, in the house. And it switched to the one that's, rather than the one that I'm right next to. <laughs> um, I've positioned myself so I'm right next to the router. It's connected itself to the router that's downstairs. Um, so hopefully this will help. Uh, it should be on the right one now. So let's keep everything crossed. Um, that we can get do what we want to do right so I've cut as I say I've tend to keep my strips uh, from cutting my card stock I keep these scraps so this is a great way to use it with scraps so I think these colors are crumb cake uh, soft succulent smoky slate balmy blue mint macaron and this is another bit of smoky slate and I have cut a uh, wind piece of acetate to be approximately eight centimeter, eight and a half centimeter square, roughly just about three inches. So it's just a little bit bigger than my die. Okay. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to use my snail adhesive. I'm just going to pop these together like this because what I want to do is I want to add adhesive to all of them. Okay. And my adhesive roller is a bit wider um, than my pieces, so I'm just going to. That's why I'm going to put them together. Sorry, Mary, I don't know why it's not working. As I say, I've, I've moved right Wi-Fi routers, so hopefully it's all right. Um, I'm looking at it here, and I can see that it's. I can see Diane saying she's got sound, but the picture's frozen. So I'm looking at it here, and I think it is broadcasting because I can see it on my other device. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just press on and hope that everybody just kind of catches up. Uh, Sue, Sue Bishop says it's working for you. So if you haven't done so already, I would suggest going out and coming back in again, that well-known technical solution to all IT problems, and hopefully that will um, sort you out. Okay, so I'm going to crack on. So I'm going to use my um, snail and I'm just going to, so 
I'm just going to add adhesive to the back of all of these. Okay. Now, if I was cutting these strips, I could use my adhesive sheets, but I'm not cutting these strips. They're already cut. Um, so that's why I'm just using my, um, my adhesive sheets. So I'm just going to grab my grid paper as well. Okay, so I'm just going to pop my acetate down. And I'm just going to use my grid paper to make sure that I've got... Yeah, so I'm going to start about here. So I'm just going to make sure I've got my line straight. Okay. Here we go. And I'm just going to grab a quick, grab a post-it quickly. Just hold my acetate in place. Okay. Oh, you can't get me, Doreen. I'm really sorry about that. Yeah. Diane's okay now. Sue is working. So right, we'll crack on and whoever's missing can catch me on, uh, find me on catch up. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay these down. Now, they don't all need to be the same. They don't need to be exact. Um, I'm just using this. And what you want to do is to leave a little bit of a gap between each one. Okay. I'm just using my circle as a guide. Okay, a bit more. Okay, and then I'll grab my scissors. Okay, and I'm going to trim these off because I can then use the bits to carry on with what I'm doing. Okay, so now I just pop my piece back down so I know it's nice and straight. Okay, and then I can do the same again. Can you see what I'm doing there? Okay. So then let's do a and ray. And I think that should do my circle just nicely. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my mini boss machine. Okay, and I'm just going to play it. So now you can see I've got my piece of acetate with my pieces on top. And then I'm just going to lay my circle die down. Run this through. Go. Okay, and now I'm going to run it back again because it's a little bit thick because we've got the acetate and the card stuck. So let's do that. Just run it a few times. There we go. Oh, okay. this element with the gaps underneath okay I'm going to bring in my card base so I've got a whisper white card base okay and then we've got a smoky slate layer and then we've got our white layer so we're just going to work on our white layer for now 
So what I want to do is I want to place my piece here, okay, but I'm going to raise it up. So I'm going to use my strips. Just grab them one second. So I've got my foam adhesive strips. Now, if you haven't got foam adhesive strips, you can just use your cut down dimensionals. Okay. Or if you've got little mini dimensionals, they'll also work. Okay. Have I got them? Oh, yes. Oh, for a minute I thought I'd put it on the wrong side. That would not have been good. So you don't need to put it underneath every strip, but you do need to make sure that the strips hide what we're putting down. Okay, let's put that in there. So there we go. So now you can see we've got that dimension. It looks like those pieces are just floating. Okay. Let's pop that. Let's just center that on there. And then I'm going to bring in my... So look at that, that looks really cool. Don't know if you can see that dimension, really lovely. And then I've just got a few pieces here. So what I'm going to do is just create a bit of a focal point around them. Don't actually need much. I think one piece is sufficient actually. Okay, and then I'm gonna grab my stays on and do a sentiment, so just grab my so I'm going to do a uh, happy birthday so this is the timeless tulip so this is one of the stamp sets that is retiring so let's do happy birthday Just keeping it super, super simple. There we go. Okay, and then I'm just going to add some glue dots here, here, and here. So that will hold my um, piece on. I might add a few more actually because I can see some of the, some of the, quite a few of the flowers actually will sit on my piece. So again, you can use liquid glue. And the reason I didn't use liquid glue is because it has, if it smears, it might show, um, it might show between your strips and that would kind of spoil the effect. Okay. There we go. And we can just lay that on there like so. And then we'll just glue our pieces down. And then down onto our base. Okay, so there we go. That's card number one. Whoever's still with me, I hope you can see it. There we go. So that is the floating technique. So I've got a couple of other variations on that for you to go through now. So let's go to the next one. So we're finished with these dies. Let's move these pieces out of the way. I will need my strips. I'm done with these pieces. Okay. Let's pop that there so it doesn't get ruined. 
Right, so I've used my dies there, but you don't have to just use dies. You could, and it doesn't have to just be a circle. So I've seen a lot of these cards, and they always seem to be circles, but of course that's not necessary. So what I've done is I've brought out my um, heart punch. So we're going to do something a little bit different now. So we've got our piece of acetate again. Okay, so we're just going to repeat the process. Okay, so just pop that down. And this time I'm going to concentrate my efforts near the bottom because that's where my punch is going to be. And I've got some skinnier strips here because I've got um, a smaller shape. Okay, so I've got some uh, fresh freesia, highland heather, um, some flirty flamingo, um, some magenta madness. So just basically some pinks and purples. Okay, so I'm just going to do... The same thing over here, I'm going to just line them up together so I can put adhesive on them all at once. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, if you had a thin adhesive roller, you could do them individually or you could use your silicon mat. That would also work. Um, but this is just, and the other thing is, it then gives me a finger's worth to hold. Okay. There we go. Okay. So now let's start with. Again, the important thing is to get the first bit straight and then the rest will kind of follow after that. So because this is a smaller shape, I'm going to put the strips a little bit closer together. Otherwise, I'll run out of room. I don't want to do that. So like that, I'm just keeping my punch next to me so I can see how my size is. As I say, it's a really, really good way of just using up all your all those skinny little scraps. I don't know if you keep them. Oh, glad you like it, Sue. Thank you for bearing with me. I'm glad somebody's still with me. I have to say, when it comes to internet and stuff like that, if I'm watching something, I have zero patience um, for sitting around waiting for it to come back on stream. I am the worst. <laughs> okay. I just move on, so to speak. Bit of extra glue on there. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, probably need another piece. Yeah. Okay, so now let's see how that fits. So I'm just gonna hold that over my yeah, so you can see, I'm just holding it over my punch so I can see I've got plenty of room. Okay, so pop this off, and then I'm just going to punch through this. So just trying to get the best, oh look, that looks good if I get the same color as top and bottom. Punch it out. Okay, and there we go, look at that. Isn't that super? Really, really lovely. Okay, so you've got the you've got the side, the shiny side up. Hi, Lynn. Glad you're with me. Um, but the side we want to show is the um, with the acetate at the back. Okay, so we're going to do exactly the same thing as before. Just going to add our piece. Just a bit. Yeah. I think those two should be enough actually. Okay, so I'm just going to, again, this card is just going to be super, super, super simple because I just really want to show you the technique. So like that, you can use punches, you can use any kind of dies that you've got in terms of different shapes. Um, so 
got a bit of magenta madness here. I'm trying to decide whether I want to put it on top of the white, well, the magenta madness, or the white. I think the magenta madness. But while I decide that, you let me know because I'm just going to get a little strip, a tiny strip of white. Okay, and using the timeless tulips. Yep, yeah, I'm going to use the little hello. I'm just going to do a super teeny tiny. I'm just looking for a skinny strip of white. I think these all might be a bit too skinny. Either says so. <laughs> oh. right. I'll use this one and then I can trim it down. So I'm just going to use the stays on. So I think once I've done my sentiment, then I'll know whether the best thing is white or coloured. So I'm just going to trim this tight. Yeah, I think it looks best on the. Ooh, it could be either, couldn't it? Hang on a minute. Uh, I've got some magenta madness, a bigger piece. Just bear with. Just grab one. Hang on. Do a black piece. That should I think that should work? Okay, so I'm just going to glue dot this on like so. I'll pop that there. Okay, and then I think we can embellish a little. Hi Zaina, welcome. There we go. You can see, you can see I already had a card based on with white, layer of black and a layer of white. So this is, you guys know, this is my favourite black and white with a pop of colour. So then let's grab, let's just see what we've got. Um, we need some... I know the ones I'm looking for. Just got to find them. Here and here somewhere. Ah, I'm all out. So let's just do our polish dots for now. And let's put a couple on here. Oop. We could use our black, um, but I think that would be just a bit too much. 
There we go. Okay. So that's our second card using the uh, floating element technique. So as I say, you don't be limited. Most of the samples that I've seen using this technique use circles, but don't be limited by it. You can use any shape you like. Now, having said that, I'm going to go back to a circle shape for my next one, but you'll see why in a moment. So this is going to be a really bright and happy one. Okay, so again, I've got my uh, piece of, I've got a base of white, a layer of white, and I'll decide what layer I want in the middle in a minute. Um, so I'm just going to place this down like I did before. I'm going to make it a bit lower. There, I've got my... So these ones now are really rather super skinny pieces, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, a glue dot just as a marker and I'm going to mark the cent roughly the center of this piece, okay? So about there, okay? And you'll see why in a minute. So let's take these and we'll do like we did before. So I've just got all sorts of colours in here. I've got Coastal Cabana, um, I've got Just Jade, I've got Daffodil Delight, Fresh Freesia, Calypso Coral, Granny Apple Green, just all sorts of. I'm just going to do a few to begin with. And then we can add more. And look, if your if your strips are not exactly the same width as each other, don't worry about it. It's not that big a deal. Okay. So again, because these are skinny, I'm just running my adhesive down all of them okay but for these ones i want the adhesive right to the end okay Alrighty. so now let's start okay i'm going to do that and then i am going to trim them as i go around because i will need multiples okay and you can see what i'm doing is i'm using that centerpiece as a guide. It doesn't matter if they overlap because I am going to cover it up. Okay. So don't worry about them being messy. So can you see where I'm going with this? I'm creating a sort of a sunburst effect. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my die over the top. Okay. So let's get some glue in here. Oops. Like I said, don't worry about it being messy in the center because we will fix that. Okay, and then when we, when we run out of pieces, then we'll just Grab some of our other gluey pieces and we'll just start building it up. So 
So I'm trying to make sure that they're not too far apart. I don't want big gaps. As you can see, I'm not really planning. I've not got any particular pattern um, to how I'm arranging these. I'm just laying them out however they come. Now you could spend hours and hours arranging a pattern. Um, but I'm not sure that you guys really need to see me do that. This is really just so you get the idea of it and then you can create your own you could do this kind of ombre using just a few colors like I said I've just pulled all of my little scraps it's my, uh, my snail is just finished so I'm just gonna grab the other one And I think we need some yellow. So let's grab some yellow. And I think I need one bit there. Let's get a bit of green and a piece of granny apple green. going to trim this piece of granny apple green down to be a little bit skinnier now you can also do this with patterned paper it doesn't have to be uh, strips of cardstock it's whatever you have there you go and I think a little bit of green no I think that should do the trick okay so now let's trim this off. All right, now that looks a mess, okay? But don't worry. We'll sort it out in a moment. Ah, oh, then you've lost sound. I hope it comes back. Let's just keep going. It's one of those nights again. I've obviously asked it to work for far too long. Um, my internet gave me 45 minutes, and obviously that was all I was allowed for tonight. Now, where are my plates? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're here somewhere. Here's one. There we go. Okay, so we'll just... This is slightly too wide to go through my mini bus, so I'm just going to do it quickly on my big shot. I'll be right back.
again because oops, because it's quite thick I've had to run it through a couple of times oh dear I've had a bit of a disaster I don't know if you can see that but uh, my die has moved right so we can fix that so what I'm going to do is grab a slightly smaller die and just cut inside let's try that again Again, still looks a mess, but don't worry, as they say. Okay, I'm going to grab a little. I have my uh, one inch circle punch. Right, you can use a little, that's, which is retired now, but you can use a circle die or you can use a little heart, all sorts of things. So I'm going to use the hello from that timeless tulips. So again, I've just got a little scrap of white. There we go. Punch that out. And then that goes. Over the top, like so. Okay, and again, we will do our adhesive strips. But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to put it in the middle so that it gets so it covers up our piece. So let's pop that there. Okay, and then we'll pop our hello over the top, just using some, keeping it flat. Like so. Okay, and then I'm going to take, uh, let's see what I've got. I'm going to go with some grey. Yep, that will work. I'm just going to close up my ink. this onto our card base. And I'm just going to grab some rhinestones. Yep, I just want some plain rhinestones. There we go. somewhere. There you go. 
And there we have it. So that's a bit more of a, like a starburst kind of using your strips rather than just straight lines across. So let's clear all this to one side, bring back in our cards. If you're still with me, it's time to tell me what your favourite is. Is it card number one, card number two, or card number three? Um, just leave those there for one second. Um, to say, I hope you're still with me. Um, thank you for bearing with me with the internet issues tonight. I hope that you found the walkthrough of the annual catalogue that I did in the earlier video helpful. So do make sure to let me know, as you say, if there's anything there that's on your list, do get there fast because the stuff is while supplies last. And when it's gone, it's gone. And you can see quite a few bits and pieces have already gone. But for now, these are the three cards that I've made using the floating element technique. So two, one, three, one, two, three. Aha, yes. Three is my